banks are supposed to lend money. And when they stop, as they have in recent months, the workings of our entire economy are threatened. Credit became so frozen, the government had to step in this past week and take an ownership stake in the country's biggest banks. On Monday, Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson summoned the CEOs of the nine largest banks to Washington and gave them a massive amount of money so that they would start lending again. The largest of the banks is Bank of America, now partly owned by the United States of America. The head of Bank of America is Ken Lewis. He says when he and the others met at the Treasury Department, it became clear that Secretary Paulson's offer was an ultimatum. No negotiation was allowed. No negotiations, no. So in other words, take it or take it. Right, right. <laughs> One of those. Right. It's said that he told the bankers and you, this is your patriotic duty. I don't remember if he used the word, but, but th there was an element to that, that this was the right thing for the, for the American financial system, and therefore it was the right thing for America. Did you feel that? Was that a persuasive line of, of Absolutely. argument? Absolutely. I, I deeply believe that. I think he was right on. Now explain why it was so important to the government that everybody agree, that the, the nine largest banks are all in this. If you have a bank in that group that really, really needed the capital, you don't want to expose that bank. In other words, stigmatize it right. so everybody exactly. knows right. that they're not as good as somebody exactly. else. Most of you were just stunned by the amount of money that the government put on the table. Yeah, yeah. At, le at least I, I was, and I, and I think most everybody else was. The total was $125 billion of taxpayers' money. Bank of America, Lewis says, didn't need the money, but got $25 billion anyway. Do you have any choice in this? In other words, can you take the money and not lend? We wouldn't want to, to do it that way because you can make more money lending. And so it, the intent will be to use it to, uh, to grow loans and, and to make more net income. But under the Treasury plan, there's no requirement that a bank use the money to lend. It could use it to acquire weaker competitors or put it in Treasury bills. One of the few strings Paulson attached relates to salaries. A bank would have to pay more taxes if it paid an executive over $500,000 a year. One of the bankers in the meeting objected and started arguing with Paulson, and that's when Ken Lewis, a critic of excessive executive compensation, spoke up. I did make the point that we needed to stop talking about executive comp and get on with this because that should not stop the deal. Actually, you're quoted as saying, if, if this is what's going to stop this, you're out of your mind. I did, use, like I did use the phrase, out of your mind. Because why? Because you thought if it got out publicly that... No, that the importance of this deal getting done versus this, these elements of executive comp uh, were just out of sync. I mean, th this was so much more important, and uh, all of us can, uh, can take a little less money. With his salary and lucrative stock and options, Lewis took home $25 million last year. But he's one of the few in the business who can be fired without a golden parachute. And he thinks executives on Wall Street have made too much money. I think they were overpaid. It's more egregious in financial services than any other industry that I know of. Uh, we need to cut back uh, compensation in this industry. So this is a question everybody wants answered. Is this socialism? Have we now sort of stepped, taken a huge step away from the kind of freewheeling capitalism that we've known for the last 30 or so years? I don't know what we'll call it, but it will be different. And there will be more regulation. Uh, the era of a, the golden era of financial services is over, in my opinion. But why isn't it socialism? If, if the government starts owning our banks... And that will not uh, last forever. We, we will, we will uh, pay off the preferred stock at some point and come back to uh, not being owned uh, partially by the government. Can you give us what your sense of how long it's going to take? Yeah, I think somewhere between three and five years we'll pay it off. I mean, then, and then you go back to uh, more toward capitalism. It's said that one of the main reasons the bank is doing well is because of your decision not to get into subprime mortgages. In, uh, in 2001, my first year as CEO, um, we decided that we just didn't like the business. It was, uh, it was too risky, and so we decided to get out of it. He makes it sound like a routine decision, but getting out of most of the financial products that brought Wall Street crashing down was significant. 
And now Lewis runs one of the country's healthiest banks, which just keeps growing. We saw the strong, strongest growth in deposits in the third quarter we've ever seen in our history. He told us that during this crisis, people are taking their money out of other banks and putting it in his. We, we bank every other American family you know, in America. You what? We bank every other American family in the United States. No. Yeah. Half of the American families. Does business with us in some form or fashion. You mean credit cards, auto loans, deposits? Checking accounts, exactly. Checking. Right. Half the country. Mm -hmm. The way B of A accomplished this was by buying the number one company in virtually every category of banking. For instance, it bought Countrywide in mortgages and MBNA in credit cards. Now it's a nearly $3 trillion conglomerate, the Walmart of banking. This is the iconic image of Wall Street, 600 wheeler dealers buying and selling. But this is B of A's trading floor and it's 600 miles south of New York. The biggest bank in America is headquartered in Charlotte. Some people don't even know what state Charlotte's in, whether it's North or South Carolina. Am I insulting you? No, in fact, I always say Charlotte, North Carolina, just so, so, so I don't, don't have to ask the sure. question. <laughs> you have this building, this that building, building, that building, that building. Then there's one next to us, that building. Not surprisingly, B of A seems to own Charlotte and the town grew with the bank. Hugh McCall was the bank's CEO before Lewis. Now it started out as a, as a relatively small regional bank. Well, we didn't like being small. I mean, there's nothing really attractive about being small. He set out to expand the bank's reach from coast to coast and make Charlotte a financial powerhouse. I think we have this sort of southern underdog of wanting to be masters of our own fate and not be dependent on Northern capital. When you were growing and you'd go to New York, mm. did they not treat you well? Is, is that, did they treat you like sort of the country bumpkins? And uh, I guess when I was a young man, I always felt a little uncomfortable in New York. This uncomfortable feeling that they, they weren't respecting you. Did you have it in your head, I'm going to conquer New York? Well, uh, that would overstate New York. I was more interested in America. Did you really think that you could overtake Wall Street? Well, have you ever played tennis? It's once you size up the competition and decide whether you can beat them or not, hey. And you thought you could? I thought I could. And they did. The crowning victory came last month when Wall Street's most famous investment houses were collapsing under the weight of their toxic portfolios and needed rescuing. They went hat in hand to Charlotte, North Carolina. Everybody thought you were going to buy Lehman Brothers. Friday night, that was the buzz. Monday morning, Monday morning <laughs> right. it's not Lehman Brothers, it's Merrill Lynch. What happened between Friday night and Monday morning? I had uh, talked to uh, Secretary Paulson that, uh, that Friday and basically said we didn't think we could do the deal without government assistance. With Lehman? With Lehman. That we, we couldn't do it without some help. And then about uh, 10.30, John Thane called. It was Saturday morning, September 13th. John Thane, the CEO of Merrill Lynch, was on the line. Lehman was on its deathbed. Merrill Lynch was said to be next. You always wanted Merrill Lynch. We've always thought that was the best You fit were for drooling us. for Merrill Lynch. We, we have always thought it was, <laughs> yep. Deals of this magnitude take months of due diligence and vetting. This deal was thrown together over a weekend with Bank of America spending $50 billion to buy one of Wall Street's emblematic companies. But now B of A is exposed to Merrill Lynch's poisonous investments and continuing losses. The question is, did Ken Lewis pay too much? Some think that we should have waited uh, till Monday and, and, and see if they would have gone bankrupt. You're saying that if you'd waited, they, they might have gone bankrupt. S some, think, some think we would have gotten it for you know, dirt, dirt cheap. But my point is, you would have had a tarnished brand, you would have had chaos, you would have had a court uh, ruling over all of the, the sale of assets, and uh, that, that it was worth it to us to pay uh, a more market price so that we could not have that happen. So what about Merrill's 17,000 brokers? Lewis has said their salaries are too high. Is New York going to lose a lot of jobs, do you think? I don't think a lot. I mean, obviously we have to 
we hit, we've got seven billion dollars of cost savings to get, and so that that means that there will be jobs eliminated. Seven billion dollars. Seven billion dollars in cost savings. Oh my God. So the government's rescue isn't helping everyone on Wall Street. What about Main Street? Has the lending started? Did this jump start lending again? It should. It's only been a few days, obviously, uh -huh. and, and it, it will make a big difference. It will. We're, we're sitting down with you Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, the market is at this moment going down again. The market's going down, and what's worrying me is, is the fact that we had, we've gotten the financial system in much, much better shape, but the economy is still a question mark, and, and we, we are in a recession by any standard other than maybe some technical standard. It feels like a recession, and we think it's going to take some time before you know, it gets better. Bank of America is the largest mortgage lender in the country. Right. So when do you think the housing problems are going to bottom out? Our best guess now is that the, uh, toward the end of the first half of next year, we'll start to see signs, either signs of the bottoming or the actual bottoming. What, what about credit card debt? Is that going to be the next shoe to drop? It, uh, in some ways, already is because uh, credit card losses have, have risen pretty substantially. Credit card debt and auto loan defaults are part of why the bank's third quarter earnings dropped nearly 70 percent. Lewis called the situation a damn disaster. Do you think your job is secure? <laughs> uh, I, I've not... It must, I must think that because I don't, I don't think about that question. It doesn't enter your no, mind. No. I threw you a zinger, didn't you I? You did, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Did you defeat Wall Street? No, to some degree we're, we're part of it. Uh, so I don't, I don't know that we defeated it, but... Well, if you're number one, right. and if the idea was to compete with New York or Wall Street, um, you won. We, we have, yes, we, ha we have won in that sense.